This past weekend, the world anxiously awaited the remnants of a Chinese rocket plunging earthward. Experts were unable to pinpoint exactly when or where the debris would make landfall. Luckily, it crashed into the Indian Ocean without incident. This is the second time in a year that Chinese space debris fell to Earth in an uncontrolled manner. On May 12, 2020, and another Long March 5B rocket made an re-entry and landed in a village near Ivory Coast. Hello, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. So what has happened with the Chinese rocket launches? Experts criticize China for being irresponsible and reckless. Chinese authorities, however, downplay the risks and claim that the debris would be relatively harmless. State-controlled media said that the Western media's coverage of the incident was a hyped-up cliché and platitude. China has a long history of letting pieces of its space equipment come down where they may. Unlike U.S. launch pads, which are usually located along the coast, China's launch pads are mostly inland, probably to keep the activities secret. So when the rocket stages separate upon launch, the pieces often fall over rural villages, causing damages. On October 25, 2007, the wreckage of a Long March 3A rocket carrying the Chang'e 1 satellite smashed into a house in Fuchuan, Guizhou Province. On June 9, 2008, debris from the Long March 3B rocket carrying a communication satellite into space for the 2008 Beijing Olympics fell into several villages in Suning County, Hunan Province, damaging a house in Tangjia Village. In May 2012, a Long March 3C rocket damaged a house and broke a high-voltage power line in the same village. On March 31, 2012, China used the Long March 3B rocket to successfully put the French Asia Pacific 7th communication satellite into orbit. A piece of the wreckage fell in a village in Guizhou province, producing a pungent yellow smoke after the explosion. Some villagers were so scared that they got their children and ran for their lives. People questioned whether the gas and smells were toxic. Yu Monglun, a Chinese rocket design expert, admitted to Chinese media that the propellants for the rocket's first and second stage boosters were toxic. He said although most of the propellant is exhausted in flight, it's still possible that a tiny amount of poison remains. Greg Altry is the director of the Southern California Commercial Space Flight Initiative. He said that the Long March 3B runs on a toxic fuel, which mixes well with water. Take a look at these pictures showing boosters falling into water streams. From the fireball and toxic mushroom cloud in a video from the 2018 Long March booster crash, Audrey could tell the boosters still contain significant amounts of propellants. Two years before that incident, on January 17, 2010, the Long March 3C rocket carrying China's third Beidou navigation satellite lifted off at the Xichang Satellite Launch Center. The night before, more than 2,000 military personnel, police, and medical rescuers were dispatched to evacuate more than 100,000 people in the area and prepare for an emergency. A villager, Liu Yunjing, witnessed the fall of the wreckage. He said that there was an explosion in the sky. Then two fast-moving fireballs made an arc and quickly passed over his head. He heard two loud noises, and the ground and trees around him shook. The heat from the impact burned trees and grass within an area 60 meters in diameter. In 2018 and 2019, similar accidents took place. CNBC reported that a shower of rocket debris crushed buildings in rural Sichuan province in a video shared widely on Chinese social media. Local government distributed evacuation notice a few days before the November 23, 2019 launch. And it reads, Please cut off your power at home 20 minutes prior and hide at a safe area. If you see any flying objects falling from the sky, please adjust your location quickly to avoid any harm. 
If you ask Americans whether they are okay with going through what the Chinese go through whenever the government launches a rocket, they will say absolutely not. But if you ask Chinese citizens the same question, they just say it's okay because they're powerless to say otherwise. They've been indoctrinated to believe that their safety is secondary after the government's space mission. This is the mindset that the Chinese Communist leaders impose on their people, and this is how the regime has been operating all along. As China's space program expands its footprint, the regime also extends its mode of operation outside China. In an interview with Voice of America, Paolo Lozano, director of Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Space Propulsion Lab, explained that almost all rocket launches in the U.S. are equipped with a device that would restart the engine to guide the rocket back to a designated, unpopulated area. Other Western experts have said that the rocket design China used for this latest launch is several decades old and that the regime did not use the latest technology, probably due to cost considerations. But wait, something just doesn't add up here. China is proud of its accomplishment in space, and yet it uses decade-old designs for one of its most important space projects? The regime has spent so much money overseas, including on the Belt and Road project, but it doesn't have the money to use the latest technology for its rockets? This just doesn't make any sense. Well, we can get an answer from an official post by the CCP's Central Political and Legal Commission regarding the rocket launch. On May 1st, the Commission posted a message on its official social media platform, Weibo. Ignition of China's fire versus ignition of India's fire. The blog post is accompanied by two pictures. On the left is a photo of the CCP launching the above said rocket, and on the right is a photo of Indians cremating the deceased victims of COVID-19. This blog post is obviously intended to ridicule India's inability to fight the pandemic while celebrating China's rocket launches, as both are, quote, sending people to the heavens. In the past, such posts often attracted a wave of nationalistic comments from online trolls, but this time the trolls were quickly drawn out by the influx of condemnation from Chinese netizens. One person wrote, only corrupt people are happy about others' misery. This post best illustrates the CCP mentality. It's obvious that the Chinese Communist Party has no respect for human life and no concern for people's suffering. That's precisely the thinking behind the Chinese leaders' lack of effort to control their rockets. They think such effort is overkill and not unnecessary, just like the state-controlled media claims. The underlying thinking is, if the rocket debris wipes out a village and kills a few people, so be it. They'd rather take the gamble than worry about it. Greg Autry wrote in a 2019 article in the Space Magazine, U.S. launch operators cannot expect to be competing on a level field with an international competitor willing to risk environmental damage and endure human casualties in pursuit of national competitive advantage. China is aggressively expanding into space. If the world doesn't take notice of the CCP's reckless behavior, and if we don't take action to stop it, we'll be helpless if a Chinese rocket rams through our communities one day and it will be too late then. Take a look at my video on the CCP's Belt and Road Initiative to understand its game plan. The video Xi Jinping's Four Fears offers you insight to form a strategy. See you next time.